Hello, I'm Sean Richards of Not a Yes Man's Economics, and today's subject matter covers various issues around, well, A, fake news, which comes to the issue of economic forecasting and its problems, and also, lobbed into that, is one of the economic realities of the modern era. I'll start with the issue of, and I'll leave you to decide for yourselves whether you think this is, um, turns out to be fake news, the issue of the UK budget that's upcoming next week. That's been presented for a while as being something that's troubled. We'll need more taxes, we'll need various things. In other words, we're short of money in terms of the public finances. This is where the care bit comes in because that's been presentation. As I've been writing for a while on my Not A Yes Man's Economics blog, the numbers have improved for over the last year or two such that the situation is now quite good. Now there's a clear gap there, isn't there? Actual numbers, good. The reporting from various places like the Institute of Fiscal Studies implying there's a problem. So there's the difference. If you look round the numbers, I suppose um, the Office of Budget Responsibility was thinking we might borrow 40, 50 million, but maybe we'll borrow 30, 35, something like that. So it's quite a sizable gap. That's something the Financial Times has been reporting this week as news. An error of 13 billion in the OBR forecast. Now, there's various issues with that. The start is that the OBR is always wrong. Some of you might be familiar with my dictum for this area, which is the first rule of OBR club is it's always wrong. Some of that's not its fault. If you try and do these sort of forecasts, you're going to be wrong a lot. But the truth is they're especially wrong. In fact, they're never right. And so here's a catch. The reality is, we see, that the numbers have been quite good, and we're seeing a bit of a screeching U-turn in the way that this is being written about, such that when the numbers come out next week, they're in line. Now that poses its own problem, doesn't it? Because if we keep telling people that things are bad, and then actually they turn out to be quite good, we lead to another situation where people lose faith in this sort of thing. So, just returning to the issue of the budget next week, I've been saying all along that there's forecasts of tax increases, well, we might get some, but there isn't the forces behind them that we've been told. As we stand, I repeat again, numbers are quite good. What do I mean by that? So far this fiscal year, we've borrowed approximately 20 billion, which is 10 billion better than last year. And that's been a trend that's been in place for a couple of years now. Receipts, pretty good growing by around 4% a year. That again has been roughly the pattern for a while. And we've managed to keep expenditure below that. Currently around about 2%, that number ebbs and flows, but it's been below the other, numbers have got better. So there's a clear thing for next week. It'll be the Chancellor's decision whether he chooses to raise taxes or not, more than the numbers forcing him. We then get to the sort of, what's presented as the issue of our times, Brexit. You may have noticed I'm more sanguine about that than others, which is, if you think the world's going to end from that, then the public finances will be bad. If you think something will happen, then we'll adjust and move on, much, much less so. So that really is the choice from what now looks a good position. Thinking of it in terms of the economics, there has been a slightly odd pattern to this, and what I mean by that is, when we thought the UK economy was doing well, the public finances disappointed. Now we think the UK economy is not doing quite so well, or has had a phase of that, the public finances have got better. Take that whichever way you like as to which number you think is more reliable. Both series of numbers now should have better VAT numbers in them. They're now coming in more in line, that's an improvement. As to which one, though, it's made right, as I said, I'll leave you to decide. Moving to today, we're seeing another example of problems with official forecasting, and also a big feature of our times. Where this comes from is if we look across to Sweden, is the fact that the feature of our times is that it has negative interest rates. It's one of those places that's found itself sucked into euro area monetary policy. By the way, it, Swedish krona moves against the euro, and so the repo rate's minus 0.5%. That's an issue in itself, but the particular thing I'm looking at today is the fact that the Riksbank's been telling us for quite a while it's going to raise rates, but doesn't. 
It's always just around the corner. We've seen a repetition of this this morning. Actually, a couple of people did vote for a rate rise, so from minus a half to minus a quarter, but it didn't happen. And if you look back, and particularly if you look around on Twitter, you'll find someone called Martin Enland, who's been looked at their sort of forecast from 2011. Guess what? Ever since then, their forecast rising interest rates into the future, what have they actually done? Well, they cut them for a bit, then they've been the same. So here is another clear problem of official reality, or excuse me, official forecasts, being very different from reality. At the moment, to my mind, this matters quite a lot because people who are following this view, the official view is now that there'll be an interest rate rise in December, this December, or next February 2019. But will there be? Let's for the moment say that there will be. So in one of those two situations, they raise to minus a quarter. Then what happens? You see, if you look around, and like, for example, we've seen this morning from Europe, there are worries that economies are turning down, not up. So there's an obvious problem with raising interest rates at this point. The market PMIs for the euro area were actually in an area whereby you might see an interest rate car, not a rise. Some of these features can be seen in Sweden too. Economic growth's been good. It's had a good run the last few years. However, if you look at the money supply data and take that as a leading indicator, as I do, just like in other places, we've seen a drop in 2018. So we've seen from a peak of around 15% for narrow money back in the days of QE when they were pumping it up, now down to more like 8, 8.4%, 8 I think was the latest reading. If we move to broad money, at the peak, nearly made double digits, 9.9% annual growth, that's now 4.5%. Quite a drop in that recently. Through the spring, it held at 6.4% for three months in a row, now 4.5%. So again, if we looked at old era monetary theory, monetarism if you like, whatever that remains, you'd be now thinking of an interest rate cut. And here's the problem. If we look at Sweden, for so long, it's had conditions that you might think would give you an interest rate rise, but it hasn't done it. Economic growth was quite good. If you looked ahead, allowing for the lags and leads, inflation's now above. So you could have raised in 2016. A little bit awkward presentationally, if you think back to then, to lower oil prices. But remember, and this is something that's got forgotten a lot in these times, you need to look about two years forwards if you're a central banker, because that's when what you're doing has an impact. So now we arrive at a situation whereby having pumped it up in a boom, will they then be trying to restrain it into a contraction? It's a big problem. It must, if you're one of them at the Ricks Bank, lead you to a few sleepless nights thinking this through. And these are the features we see at these times. Why do we see this? There is, of course, the wider issue of fake news and how that goes around. But the fact is that we've seen more and more of these sort of official forecasts. And the trouble is, people rely on them. Why not? The ordinary person doesn't know any different from that. But the issue is that they keep being wrong, wrong and wrong again. What is the point in basing yourself on things that are virtually always wrong? There's little purpose to that. So now we find ourselves on the end of what it is probably as big a monetary experiment as there's ever been seen by central banks. And then if anything, they might be doing something into what looks like, if not the next downturn, is a slowdown. As I said earlier, we've seen this um, evidence of this to some extent this week in the euro area. Today's news, not very good if you have faith in those business service from market. Already seen the Bundesbank say this week, it doesn't think there'll be much growth in this quarter in Germany course in itself is an issue for the euro area. There's the struggles of Italy. Some of the surveys this morning separately from France were not very good. So the monetary data heads that way and the central bankers are heading in a different direction. Returning back to the UK, somewhat surprisingly if you look at that because we've had slowing money supply data, the UK economy somehow held in and the budget news for next week's quite good. 
not how things are presented, though, is it? Thank you.